Welcome back. We're going to pick up where we left off uh, and work on our lampshade now. So I'm going to turn this around. We're going to start working on this side of things. And we want it to look like... Um, where did we go? Like this. Okay. Um, so let's extrude off of here. And uh, let's add it back on here. So I want to... We'll just slide this down and zoom out a little bit. We're going to go up and grab this polygon. So if you save it, okay, and you don't have your tools, you can go back up here. You can hit four on your keyboard, go back into the modify panel and find them here as well and grab your toolbar here. I think I moved that and skewed it a little bit. All right, let's um, extrude this here if i move this i can i can drag that around we don't want to do that right now um but if i hold down shift i can extrude it and pull it out like that uh, that's kind of the quick easy way to extrude now the issue with that is my angle that i'm doing that is not going to make it straight okay so i don't want to do that i'm going to use my extrude tool here and then i can drag it straight on out um we're going to make it about the same length as the other one there. We can always adjust that. Let's go now and expand this using our uniform scale tool. I'm going to zoom out a little bit here as well. And I'm going to kind of make this grow. Okay. Now I want to bring this down a little bit. And we are going to, we're going to rotate this. So grab your rotate tool and we're going to turn this polygon, the plane of the polygon to reflect this. Okay. So let's see if I can find my view. So this is what we want it to look like. Um, let me change my look here. And this, just so we can have them side by side, this is kind of how we have it looking now. Um, so what I want to do, it's pretty close here. What I want to do is I want to make it more rounded and expanded. Let me just um, maximize my viewport here. So go to maximize so we have a little more real estate to work with. And... If you see on here, see if I get out of this magnifying glass, um, this rounds out. Okay, we can do that manually here. Um, we're going to use our Swift Loop tools to do that. They're going to be underneath this modify section. Uh, bum, 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 bum. Let me just expand my window here. I'm so used to working on a full size screen. And I guess they are under edit, not modified. They're always together on my layout here. So I'm going to grab Swift Loop. Okay. If your screen is smaller, it would be under this edit menu. You can pull that down in here, Swift Loop. Okay. That's going to stay turned on until I shut it off. So I'm going to put in a few loops here. So let's just kind of cut this and segment it. One. Now, if I kind of, it's going to kind of, uh, jump around and follow the surface edge that I am tracing and have my cursor closest to. So as I go down this edge, it's going to allow me to put some cuts in here. I just want to kind of make them uniform and so that I can expand this. So I'm just going to have like four cuts in there that would give me five segments in our extrude that we just did. Now we have to go and shut that off. So I'm going to go up here and shut Swift Loop off. Otherwise, it's going to continue to want to cut things. Um, and we're going to go and use our loop selection. Okay, grab this. Well, now, okay, let's, I want to show you the border again. So we've been dying to try out the border, right? And it, if I click on it, it still doesn't work. We're almost there with the border. Um, let's grab my edge tool for now, though. And I can click on one of these edges. Now I can use my loop tool and loop it okay i can turn on my loops here as well and that will let me kind of quickly and um select the entire loop 
when I click on one edge or element. So what I want to do with these is I want to scale these up. If I move it, it's just going to skew everything like this. That's not what I want to do right now. So I'm going to grab my, my scale tool and I want to increase the size of these uniformly. Um, and I will manually kind of make this bigger and a little more round. So um, might need to play with it just a little bit and kind of, now we'll smooth it in a few minutes um, so that it looks a little more realistic, but I'm just gonna kind of manually eyeball it here and expand these up a little bit. All right, that's not bad. I'm, I'm okay with, with that and kind of making it look realistic. So the light bulb comes down and I'm pointing at an angle here and our lampshade um, would be parallel to the floor um, by having this, this angle skewed on here. So let's um, rotate out of here. I'm gonna get out of my, my scale tool. I'm gonna just click on my move tool by default to get rid of that. I'm going to also shut my ring tool off because my loop tool off because it's going to want to stay in that. Now let's grab the face of our polygon and we're going to open this up and we are going to, okay, that lets us see the inside and that looks pretty good. But in real life, this metal has, this has zero thickness to it. Um, so it's super sharp. So let's go into our modify panel and we're going to add a shell modifier on here just to give it a little thickness. So we are in modify, find your modify list. Um, I should, I should select something here. I'll grab the element and click on the whole element. And in our modify list, let's go down alphabetized shell down in the S's. There we go. Apply it. Now, depending on by default, it might look something uh, more like an inch long and it could be inner or outer. You could go either. I like the way this looked on the outer side, so I think I'm going to leave it zero to the outside and I'm going to um, bring it and give it a little thickness on the inside. So maybe just a tenth of an inch. Okay, that gives it some thickness of kind of how the metal lip would be on the shade. And we are looking good. Um, let me just rotate around here. Yeah. So now some of you might be like, well, it looks blocky. Maybe I should add some more segments and stuff in there. And the answer is no, we don't want to over segment it because if we wanted to go back and modify some of these panels, it just makes it that much harder for selection mode. So what we can do, if we look down in here, I can expand my screen now. Um, under our modifier list here, I'm on shell. Let's see, let me make this bigger so that we can see side by side what my my shell tools are will it let me see them usually when it has a longer list here it lets me double column um nope all right so but if i click on editable poly here we go this is we're going to go back to this editable poly it's not the tool for the shell we're, so this is a hierarchy of the order of things now what we're going to go and do is down in this list towards the bottom. We use NERMS in the past. What we're gonna use is we're gonna use that same principle and we're gonna use NERM subdivisions. So instead of NERMing the whole thing with, with um, the NERM button here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna use it as a smoothness um, tool. We turn that on and what it's doing is it's kind of adding these subdivisions in there um, automatically to render our our scene. So let me turn off edge faces with F4. Okay. And let's see how this looks. If I click on shell now, it will turn the those little subdivisions off and you can see that that rounded uh, a lot more off. If I turn this back on and go down to NERMS, and I shut the subdivision off, it looks blocky again. So it's kind of a quick, easy way of smoothing things out. I could um, change it in my smoothness for my render, but I kind of want to see it right now. And that's showing up under standard. I don't even have to have um, high quality on in order to see that, okay? And I can click back on my shell modifier. 
So this is all ready to attach. We're looking at 10 minutes on this video already. So I think I'm going to shut this video off. I'm not going to put a light bulb in it for my scene. We're not going to see it from that view. Feel free to do so. Um, then in the next video, we're going to line this up and we're going to start um, adding our, our parts on here. So we're just going to bring that over and hook them all together. And we will have a working lamp that we can put into our scene. Thanks for joining me on this, this build. And we are looking forward to wrapping up in our next one. Uh, peace out.